Shooting portraits in natural light can produce amazing results. Finding good natural light is a skill that takes a long time to develop. Many photographers simply shoot in daylight and hope for the best to get some usable images. The best natural light photographers know how to seek out great light. They know how to manipulate natural light to suit their purposes. Reflectors are a big part of the manipulation of natural light and used properly can produce beautiful portraits in most lighting conditions. There are various types of reflectors used in photography. The most popular one is the 5-in-1 reflector that we're going to show you how to use in this video. We're going to give you 30 tips on how to use a 5-in-1 reflector. We took Layla, our model, to a local park at midday, which is the most difficult time of day to shoot natural light, to show you how to use a 5-in-1 reflector. When you're using a reflector, it's not just good enough to hold it up in the hope that it's going to reflect onto your subject. You need to hold it in a precise position, or your assistant needs to hold it in a precise position. Now science tells us that the angle that light hits a surface is the same as the angle that it reflects off that surface. The angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. It's similar to a billiard ball or a snooker ball. It hits the cushion at one angle and it leaves the cushion at the same angle. So your assistant or yourself have to be precise with where to hold that reflector to reflect the maximum light onto your subject. G'day. We're here talking about reflectors today. The sad truth is that most photographers have got no idea how to use a reflector properly. Whether they're using in sunlight, in shade, in studio with flash or whatever, I see so many YouTube videos when the photographers have just got no idea. They're teaching people the wrong way to do it. Now, the major thing that we need to think about when we're using natural light or any other light in a photograph is that your brain expects the light to come down from above. Because in the real world, the sunlight is the only light that we normally have and sunlight comes down from above. So your brain is happy when the light is coming down on your subject. So holding your reflector down low, bouncing light up into your subject's face, is just gonna give us ugly up light onto their face. We need to hold our reflector up high to be able to have that light coming down onto our subject, particularly when we're using our reflector as a main light. If we're using it as a fill light, which I'll explain a little bit later, then having that light at 90 degrees to our main light is okay. But we still don't want the majority of light coming up onto our subject's face. Now, when we watch YouTube videos, you'll often see a five-in-one reflector like this being used down low, reflecting light back up into a model's face or into a subject's face. It's just not the right way to do it. We often see photographers trying to hold the reflector in one hand or balance it on their knee to try and get that light working. It just doesn't work at all. You need somebody else, you need an assistant or a helper who knows what they're doing to be able to hold this reflector in the proper way so that you get the light working the way that your brain expects it to work. Now I'm not going to go over our 5-in-1 reflector because everybody's seen what a 5-in-1 reflector is. We've got various different surfaces in this unit that we can play around with. These things here are really versatile. It's the most versatile, cheap lighting accessory that you're ever going to have. So today's lesson is going to be invaluable. You're going to be able to learn how to use it properly and you're going to be able to see how many possibilities these things present for us as photographers. We're here at Crowdus Bay Park today. We're going to do shots of our model, Layla, um, who is amazing, as you've seen before. Now, the major thing that we need to think about when we're shooting in available light, particularly on a bright sunny day like we have here, is to turn our models back to the sun. We don't want any of that bright sunlight on her face. We don't want any of this dappled light on her face. So we turn her back to the sun, which means that the front of her is reasonably dark. So that's the first thing we can do with our reflector. We can bounce some light back onto her to brighten her up. The second thing we need to think about is getting that reflector up high, as I mentioned before. So holding a reflector for your photographic assistant is not the easiest thing in the world. Your, your assistant needs to be able to see, sorry, I'm covering you up, Layla. Your assistant needs to see where that light is happening onto that subject. So having somebody holding it like this 
just with the hope that it's going to be in the right spot is not going to work. We need to have some way to be able to view that light falling on our subject. So the best way to do it that I've found is to hold this reflector up behind your head. It messes up my hair. I hope it doesn't make me look too bad. But holding that reflector up high means that our assistant can see by moving it around where that light's going to fall on our subject and it's going to be much easier. It's quite difficult to do, so you need someone who's a bit bulky. That's why we've got Greg here today to hold our, um, our reflector for us. But another major thing with reflectors is that they need to be flat. And that's a big problem with most reflectors, particularly the cheaper ones, is that they don't sit flat. You can see this reflector is not flat. It's twisted a little bit, which means that the reflection that it's going to throw is going to be uneven. If we have a completely flat reflector, it's going to throw a reflection that's the same size and the same quality all over our subject. This is going to throw a bright spot somewhere on our model where it may not be where we want it to be. And the other major problem we have with reflectors is wind. <laughs> I can't make a joke about that. The major, the other major problem we have with reflectors is wind. And being an older gentleman, I know a lot about wind, but having wind in our environment can make it really difficult for our assistant to hold that reflector flat. We've got quite a windy day today here at Crowdus Bay. So we've come into a sheltered area to show you these techniques so that Greg won't have too much of a problem with wind blowing the reflector around. You've been listening. <laughs> well, I figured I'd better play the instructions. <laughs> so you need to see where that reflector is going to happen. Maybe moving a bit closer. So no, I'm struggling to work out yeah, just see where the angle is. Well, it's up there. So the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. So there you go. You know your physics, don't you? So I'm going to take a shot first of Layla without the reflector, even though Greg's just spent five minutes trying to get in the right spot. We're going to take a shot without the reflector, then we'll show you one with. All right, lovely. Here we go. That wind is just perfect today. Blowing your hair, drying your eyes out. Okay, Greg, we'll get that reflector back up again, please. Yes, so you can see the difference that makes. And one thing that most people don't know, as Greg moves around the front of Layla, we can change the direction that, that light's hitting her. So we can have this light reflecting from the side over here of Layla, so we're lighting more from the side. As we move around, we're still in the sun, but we're changing the way that light hits Layla's face. As we move from the side to the front, we need to make sure that that bright spot from the reflector is still hitting Layla's face, but we can change that light. Another way we can change how the light's falling on Layla's face is for the camera position to move around. We can move from in front of her around to the side and have the reflector in one spot. That's going to change how that light works on her face as she turns her face towards the camera. And the third way, obviously, is to get Layla to turn. Because she can turn her face and that will affect how that light's falling on her face. So lots of different opportunities we've got simply by using that reflecting surface. Now we're going to change it to a silver reflector so that we're going to get more light reflecting onto Layla's face. Now we've got our silver reflector from our 5-in-1 and we're reflecting sunlight back onto Layla and you'll see the problem that we have with doing this. The major one is that it's going to blind Layla because it's just so bright. She can't open her eyes properly with that silver reflector there. The best way to use this silver reflector is to move it into the shade. So we're going to move both Layla and Greg into the shade and use that silver reflector just to brighten up Layla a little bit. There you go. It's much easier for Layla because she hasn't got that bright light in her face. And it's easier for Greg too, because he's not getting his bald spot sunburn. <laughs> okay, now, we're going to use our reflector now as a chin reflector to bounce a little bit of light back up into her, her face. Up till now, we've been using the reflector as a main light, because it's the main brightest light that's been lighting Layla. Now we're going to use the ambient light as our main light, and we're just going to use a little bit of fill from down below to light into the shadow areas of Layla's face. We don't want this bottom light, this up light, to predominate because it's going to look spooky. It's going to make her look really creepy um, and she doesn't want that. Do you? No, okay. So we're going to switch to the white one again, which is really going to piss Greg off because he doesn't want to keep changing reflector surfaces. 
So instead of using the white reflector, we're using the scrim here because the scrim is less reflective than the white. Even with the white reflector in the shade, we could get a little bit too much uplight onto Layla's face. So we're using the scrim, which is reflecting maybe 40, 50% of the light up and the other 40, 50% is going through. So it acts like a gray reflector. Okay, so we'll take one without first. That's it. Okay. All right, great. Now we'll need to get it in fairly close. Greg? Yeah, that's it. That's good. You can see that. Lovely. Yep. Okay. I wish manufacturers of five-in-one reflectors would give us a gray surface instead of that horrible gold one. There's no reason why they couldn't because sometimes white and silver are just too bright in some situations. A grey reflector would be a much more helpful um, surface to be using. Now one thing that a lot of photographers don't realise either is that we can change the quality of light from our reflector by moving it closer or further away from our subject. The closer we move that reflector to our subject, we're using a scrim at the moment to reflect that light, the larger the light source is and obviously the brighter the reflection will be as well but we can move it further back to harden up that reflection or move it in closer to soften it. So we're gonna do both here. So we've got this reflector about a meter and a half from Layla. Here we go, yeah? Lovely, good, yep. Now we're gonna move it in closer. As long as we keep it out of frame, it's not gonna be a problem. So in a little bit closer, Greg. Yeah, that's it, okay, great. Come around the front a little bit more, Greg. Yeah, there we go, great, yes, beautiful, okay. So because that reflector's closer, it's softer, because we all know the larger the light source relative to the subject, the softer the light's going to be. One other benefit of using a reflector is that it puts a little catch light, a little bright catch light in your subject's eyes that just makes them sparkle a little bit more, makes them stand out a little bit. So we're gonna do a couple of shots with the reflector, a couple without, to show you that difference as well. I'm gonna get in really close, which is gonna make Layla feel really awkward but I want to be able to see that catch light in her eye. All right, so we'll do it, with the, we'll do it without the reflector first. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, here we go. All right, just shooting in there close. Here we go. Lovely. A bit more serious one for me. Yeah, that's it. Great. Okay, now we'll get Greg in with that reflector and we'll see that bright highlight in Layla's eye. Yeah, there you go. Great. All right, terrific. You can see the difference that makes. So we're in bright sunlight now. Um, we're facing Layla towards the sun because sometimes we need to have that as our background. If we're at a location where the best backgrounds are away from the sun, then we need to have our model facing towards the sun. It's not a great idea to shoot her in this sort of light because it's very harsh and very uncomfortable for our model. So I'm just gonna shoot a shot like this and see how bad it looks. Sorry, Layla, just look down at the ground. Yep, that's okay. All right. All right, so you can see how, how harsh that light is on her face, and it's very difficult for Layla to look at the camera because the sun's behind me. Now we're going to use the scrim and pull it in. Greg's going to get the scrim between the, the sunlight and Layla, and it's going to soften that light down and make it so much easier for her. And it's going to give us beautiful, soft light. Fantastic. Look at the difference in there. Simply because we put a scrim or a translucent piece of fabric between that sun and Layla, it makes it so much easier and so much nicer. So this is the wrong way to use the scrim. Um, Greg hasn't been paying attention, but I'll, I'll give him a second chance. He's lifted up that reflector to that scrim too high, and we've got a little bit of sunlight peeping through in the bottom of the frame. We need to try and make sure that whole frame is scrimmed so we don't get that bright spot in the bottom corner. Okay, that's it, good. Okay, just drop it down a bit, Greg, for me. Yeah, that's it, that's much better. Great. Okay, so that's one thing you need to keep an eye on. Now, another technique that I use quite often when I want to shoot a wider shot of the environment is to do what I call the secret reflector. The secret reflector technique involves having Greg in nice and close with that reflector to give the nice light onto Layla, but then I take a plate, which is a shot without Greg in there, and later on in Photoshop, 
I can erase him out of the frame. So I'll show you how we do that. So we've got our wide shot set up here. We've got Greg with the reflector. It's no good using him out of the frame because it's just not going to be bright enough, that reflection on Layla. So we need to get him in nice and close. I'll take the shot with him there. Then I'll take another one without him there and we can blend them in Photoshop. You notice I'm using my tripod because it makes it so much easier. I could do it handheld, but it's a little bit, um, those frames will be a little bit off, misaligned, so it'll make it a little bit more difficult to do. Okay, here we go. Lovely. Yep, turn your face towards the light, please, Layla. Yeah, that's it. Great, turn your shoulders away from the light. Yep, that's it. Terrific. Okay, got a lady with a pram in the background, but that's okay. All right, so you just move out of the shot and we'll just do another shot. There we go. So we've got a plain shot without Greg in there and the shot where Layla's lit and I'll show you how to get rid of Greg later on. And I'll mention it to his wife when we get home too. I'm just using a very basic screen recorder here just to show you um, the basics of how we blend both of these images together. We've got Layla being lit and Layla not being lit. We open them up in Photoshop. We use our move tool to drag one image on top of the other. So we've got the lit one on top. We line them up so that they're in register. And then we use our eraser tool to erase the top image where Greg is and allow the bottom image to show through. So it's a very basic operation. Once we've done that, we simply go up to our layers menu, go down to flatten our image, and then we can save it. Now we're going to use the black side of the 5-in-1 reflector. Um, it's a bit strange to have a black surface on a reflector because black doesn't reflect any light, but what we use it for is to absorb light to be able to control the light a little bit more. And it's a really handy um, surface to be using. And you'll see the ways we use it here um, and probably a lot of other uses that I just haven't thought of. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna use it for is to give a little bit of a shadow on one side of Layla's face. We've got this nice big soft light, Layla, lighting Layla at the moment. Layla lighting, it's a bit difficult to say but we've got this big surface lighting Layla, so the available light looks pretty good. So you can see that that light looks really nice and soft on Layla. We're gonna move this black reflector in a little bit further around the front, Greg. Yep, and you'll see that that gives us a little bit more modeling on Layla's face. It's a little bit darker on one side, so it gives us that a, a bit more of a direction in that light rather than have it directly frontal. It just depends on what you're looking for. It depends on your situation and how you want to shoot. The other way we're going to use our black reflector is to hold it over the top of Layla's head as a top blocker. Because the problem with most available light shots is that the light's coming from too high above. We've got a reasonably good um, light direction here, but it is still coming down at about 45 degrees, um, which by my way of thinking is way too high. So we're going to put that black reflector above Layla so that we're dropping that light down coming into her face and making that light look a little bit more flattering. Okay, Layla, here we go, yeah? Lovely. All right, now we'll move that in, Greg. Now I'm gonna to need to alter my exposure because the light on Layla is a little bit less. So I'm going to open up my aperture a little bit more. Lovely, here we go. That's good. Terrific, yeah. Okay, so even though Layla hasn't got very deep set eyes, um, we can still see the difference. We're getting a little bit more light into her eyes rather than having that little bit of darkness in her eyes with that light coming from above. And this works both on cloudy days as well as sunny days. The aim for us as glamour or model photographers is to have that light, that soft light, coming in at about 20 degrees, maybe 30 degrees maximum onto a face. Now we're going to use our black reflector to cut the green reflection from the grass on Layla's face. Because we've got her sitting down close to the grass, that sunlight is reflecting off the grass to a certain degree and putting a bit of a green cast into Layla's skin. So I'm going to shoot her like this. You'll see that little bit of green cast. Then we'll put the black uh, blocker down there and that will prevent that uh, green cast on Layla's skin. Okay, just stretch that foot out a little bit more. 
top one here. That's it. Okay. All right, here we go. Greg, can you put it in? In close to her if you can. Yeah, that's it. Great. Okay, Layla. Yep. All right, fantastic. You can see the difference that that makes. Just that little bit of uh, green in the shot can really change the look of it. Now, this use of the black reflector is really handy as well. What we can do, if we've got grass that's a little bit wet or ground that's a little bit wet, we can get our model to sit on it, which is what we're going to do now. Here's a demonstration of Layla sitting on the black reflector. There we go. Fantastic. See, I'm not taking a shot, but that's one way that you can use this black reflector. You can also use it if you're shooting on sand at the beach or somewhere like that. You can put your gear on top of it to prevent sand getting in any of your gear. Obviously, if you've got your gear on top of it, you can't use it as a reflector, but buy two. We'll be back in a little while to show you some other things that we can do with a reflector. Shut up, bird. Yeah. That'll be cool. Do that. We've got to get a shot of you wrestling with the wind. Yeah, just wrestle with the wind a little bit. Let it go. And, yep. That's it. Good stuff. Okay. All right, we'll be back in a little while to explain some more things that we can do with the reflector. Do that again, Floyd. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> We'll be back in a little while to explain some more reasons why you might want to use a 5-in-1 reflector. Here are a few other uses for a 5-in-1 reflector. The first one is to create a breeze. We can use our 5-in-1 reflector as a flat surface to wave around and blow our model's hair. We can wave it gently or we can wave it more vigorously, depending on how we want to do. And it will create some beautiful breeze in that hair and blow that hair away from her face. The second way we can use our 5-in-1 reflector is if we're shooting by window light. If you've got sunlight coming through your window, it's generally not good because you're going to have that harsh, small light source light that doesn't look particularly attractive. But you can use your scrim to hold up in that window to soften that light coming through the window, put it on the outside of the window, so you get nice soft light coming through that window instead of that hard sunlight. It makes a huge difference to the results that you get. Another way you can use the reflector is to block that direct sunlight on the back of your subject. Now, in this video, you'll see those shots we've done of Layla. They're mostly backlit. She has the sun behind her. So she has beautiful light around her hair and her shoulders, but there's a hot spot, there's a bright spot on her hair where that sunlight is directly on her hair. She has blonde hair, so it's more noticeable than dark hair, but even on dark hair, you often get that really bright spot. Now, we can't really do a lot about that without adding extra light to our subject because our natural light is restricted. We've got bright sunlight coming from the back and we can't possibly have the same light coming on the front of our subject using natural light or reflectors. So we can put a scrim in behind Layla, held into that sunlight so that that lessens that brightness of the light hitting the back of Layla's hair or hitting the top of Layla's head so that it softens that light down and doesn't make it quite as harsh. We could even probably get some good detail in that bright light hair if we wanted to. I haven't done it with this shoot, but it is possible and it's quite easy to do. Another use for the dark side of your reflector, the black reflector, is when you are shooting through glass. If you're shooting someone sitting in a car through the glass of the window, or you're shooting someone inside a house or a building through the glass of the window, you can get really nice soft light coming on their face, but the problem is the reflection of that glass of the outside environment. The reflection is overwhelming and you can't see your subject particularly well. One way you could help that situation would be to use a polarizing filter, which would help to negate that reflection on that window. But we can also do it with the black side of our reflector. We can put that black side of the reflector up in that situation to block that reflection light onto our model. And we get that beautiful light coming through that window without any bother of the reflections. There are many more possibilities with reflectors when we use flash but we're not talking about flash today. We're only talking about natural available light. So we'll make another video in the future about using reflectors with flash. Another way we can use our black reflector is to use it to block the sunlight on my lens. 
because if I'm shooting towards the sun, which I love to do, on a sunny day, I'm going to get lens flare because that sunlight's hitting the front of my lens. So we can use that black reflector to just shade my lens so that I get that beautiful light on Layla, but I don't get any lens flare from my camera. Okay, we'll shoot one without that first with a bit of lens flare. Okay, here we go, lovely. Okay, you can see that lens flare in that shot. It's just a little bit um, flat, there's a bit of haze there. Now we're gonna use the black reflector to block that sunlight. Okay, here we go, yeah, great. using our reflector as a background. We're just putting it in behind Layla, using the natural light to light her face. We're in some open shade here, so the light's quite nice. And we're using that black background, just like a studio shot. Okay, yep, that's it, great. Okay, lovely, yeah. Okay, we're gonna to switch to white now and do a white background. So who needs a studio when you've got a big reflector and a big assistant? who can hold it for you. Okay, now we've got a white background. Yep, here we go, good, lovely. We could use the scrim, but the problem is when we did that, we had a very ominous figure of Greg shadow in the background behind Layla, so it didn't really work well. Greg wants us to use the gold, okay. So we'll use the gold. Yep, here we go, lovely, yeah. Now we're going to use one of the least popular sides of our 5-in-1 reflector, which is the gold. Now, most people don't like the gold because it gives an unusual look onto people's faces. It looks like they're too tanned and the background's a different colour. But I'm going to use it for that reason. I'm going to use the gold reflector to light Layla's face. And then in post-production, I'm going to change that light on her face to normal, which is going to make my background a little bit blue. So you can be creative with this stuff as well. Lovely. Tell me when you're ready, Greg. Yeah, yep. Great. That's it. Good. One more. Greg. Another way we can use our white side of our reflector is as a white balance tool. We can shoot Layla with that white card in front of her, and then we can correct any subsequent shots with our white balance tool in Photoshop or Lightroom. So if we want to shoot a series of shots over this way, we just take one with the white balance tool and then we get rid of it and we shoot all our others and we can correct them all, uh, correct all the white balance. Okay, so here we go. This is going to be the best shot of the day, Leila. That's it. Lovely. Yeah. <laughs> Terrific. Okay, Greg, can you come and grab the reflector? And we'll keep you there. Just a couple of poses and we'll, yeah. Great, yes, good. Now, a couple of uses of the reflector that you may not have heard of. The first one would be if it rains. We've got a perfect rain shelter. Up above here, I can get Greg to carry all my gear in the rain, but I stay nice and dry. A second way to use it, and this is particular for Australia or any other country that has diving birds. We're here in the springtime today, so there's a danger that we're going to get magpies diving down and trying to peck off our ears. So we can use this as a magpie deflector. This way, everybody knows that magpies don't like gold shiny things. So we can just reflect the magpies with our reflector. And the last one, which is the most important one, is whenever you're using a reflector out in the general public, it makes people think you know what you're doing. You look like a photographer who's got some knowledge. So even if you've got no idea what you're doing, take a reflector and people will think you're a better photographer. I've got lots of tips about that. 